Uh, it's a privilege to chair these two. Okay, okay. okay. So we'll wait for five ten minutes and then. Yeah. Okay, we'll wait for five to ten minutes. Prof. Kate, it's 9.15 now. Shall I, can I call you up? Please. Thank you. For, on, on behalf of Dr. Bhujwani and me, we, are, uh, we have two stellar persons, two doyens of GI surgery in this session. Uh, I wish we had this in a larger hall. Uh, Professor Vikram Kate, meta-analysis and systemic review, nuts and bolts for the young surgeon, please. Uh, good morning to all and at the outset I'd like to thank the organizers uh, for giving me this opportunity to share uh, some of our experience on uh, research and uh, uh, although we've not done too many of the meta-analysis and systematic reviews but still uh, through some of them which you have done I will give a brief on this talk about systematic review and meta-analysis. Uh, before I start the talk, <coughs> I'd like to say that when we talk about systematic review and meta-analysis, this is one of the uh, reviews which can be classified as an original article and it can be submitted in the conferences. Many of the conferences accept this as an original article. So when we see the levels of evidence, uh, where does it sit? You can see that uh, the meta-analysis sits right at the top. It's a uh, 1A classified evidence and when we see systematic reviews and good randomized control trials, they are classified as 1B and 1C uh, levels of evidence. So they sit right at the top of the levels and if you have a good meta-analysis or systematic review done, and uh, then definitely it can give a, a good conclusive evidence for a research question, what we are trying to address. Now these are a few of our randomized controlled trials. They are individual studies and if you see the first one, uh, all of them were accepted as uh, plenary presentations in the uh, society first, uh, this thing, SSAT of DDW conference. Now, the first one is whether adapted ERAS pathway works in an emergency scenario. The second one, whether perioperative high oxygen reduces infection following ele elective colorectal surgery. And then this uh, pregabalin and antioxidants combination, whether it reduces pain in patients with chronic pancreatitis, and whether hunger-based feeding can be given in patients with severe acute pancreatitis. So all of them, this is digestive disease sciences, again a good journal. These are all RCTs and uh, recently this, uh, this is again 2022. These are all investigator initiated trials. So when we have randomized control trials which are investigator initiated, that means uh, these are the trials which we ourselves designed and we have started. Definitely the value of these is because they are single center trials. Compared to multi-centric or multi-country trials, the value is again less. But still, as I said, you see all of them, uh, if you see the last one, that was accepted in the presidential plenary at the SSAD DW conference, very, very prestigious type of presentation. But ultimately, it's a single center uh, investigator initiated trial. So can it be, so can it be uh, uh, a good RCT, can it be a final evidence? Uh, no, because you see, of the studies what I have shown, except one I will show a little bit in the end, that was a negative study, all are positive studies. That means we could actually document what we had mentioned in the title, we could document what we are thinking that this might be better than this. So, so is that a final evidence? So a lot of people might do a study and if it is a randomized controlled trial, you may get a negative outcome. So many times what happens is if you have a negative outcome, they are discouraged from submitting that, uh, submitting that manuscript and they put it into the drawer. That is what is called as file drawer syndrome. 
and uh, because they are apprehensive it might not get published people might not be aware there are some particular journals which publish only negative studies so definitely when you do a funnel plot which is required for a meta analysis you will see something like that you can see here that uh, there is definitely a, a hole gaping hole on the right side picture so i can't see a point to here uh, so so this indicates that uh, there is a publication bias that means only positive studies are published and negative studies is not published in those circumstances you may not be able to draw proper conclusive evidence so that is the need for systematic review and meta analysis so based on one rct or two or three rcts you cannot say a is better than b there are possibilities that many studies have shown b is better than a but they are not published so that is why when we do a proper analysis like a meta analysis we will know because meta analysis has a component of funnel plot that whether it's a proper research question addressed by published studies so systematic review and meta analysis answers questions more effectively than individual studies identifies problems in primary research and you can actually correct in future studies the research questions then future research priorities can be determined based on this definitely it's a benefit to the authors to have a systematic review or a meta analysis in the name and for the journal also and as i said it generates the highest level of evidence if you talk of meta analysis good meta analysis it's level 1a type of evidence so what are the types of reviews you see you have a narrative review qualitative review quantitative review qualitative is uh, systematic review and quantitative is meta analysis so what is a systematic review a comprehensive search for relevant studies on a specific topic and those identified are then appraised and synthesized according to the predetermined and explicit method if you see the right side picture whether this regime sequential therapy is better than standard therapy this is the research question so this is being addressed through this systematic review on the recent evidence that's a drugs journal which has got a very high impact factor so as i said i have mentioned earlier that basically systematic review and meta analysis is a type of original article and we have to see we have to it has to answer all the bradford hills questions like any original article like an in introduction we have to mention why are you doing this study methods how you have done the study results what did you find and discussion what does it mean so what are the elements of systematic review formulate the review question and write a protocol search for and include primary studies assess study quality extract and analyze data interpret results i just show through our systematic review what needs to be done now this is the systematic review shown earlier if you see the left column this is the introduction part of it why actually we would like to know whether sequential therapy is better than standard triple therapy methods we can see Uh, myself vk and uh, r kalarasan both of us actually searched medline mbase google scholar cochrane you have to search all the studies if you miss the studies then the point is lost then you put all these uh, uh, keywords and get the date or get the information the studies this is what we follow and then you have to use all types of keywords you can see the combination on the right side okay if you put the proper keywords then you can get the maximum possible uh, studies you can see that uh, number 3 olfactory bulb and cell death or apoptosis if you put proper boolean operators i'll not go into details of that you can see 586 studies were drawn out so maximum possible studies maximum possible databases you have to search that's why you put to independent people and if there's a controversy between the two it has to be resolved by the third person that's the rule that is to be followed so then we put it like a consort chart which is there for randomized controlled trials the consort similar type of chart for systematic review and uh, meta analysis called as prisma chart flow chart so preferred reporting items for systematic review and meta analysis so this is a 27 item checklist consort is 26 item checklist so that is how we do it and then we include the studies then 177 studies were there and 160 were excluded exactly like a consort we put consort we don't put multiple studies it's a single randomized controlled trial excluded and ultimately you'll find in most of the meta analysis you will have 10 15 20 type of studies if you include lots of studies the chances of heterogeneity increase i'll mention that little later so now <clears throat> the data is extracted and then you have all the studies here listed out and these are the these are the uh, column these are the uh, columns under which the data has been extracted this is all dependent on 
what exactly you are searching uh, in your research question. Then you write a report. Based on these 17 trials, you have to write the detailed reports and have a conclusive idea what these trials together uh, tell about the research question. So, this is what it is that it tells, this is, these are all the details of the studies and based on that then you write the discussion. So, discussion is what you have found and what others have found as far as that particular research question is concerned then you have a conclusion, it follows the MRAD pattern. Remember this is the systematic review which is over and we have not used any statistical test. So, here nothing, no statistics are required. So, compared to a conventional review, conventional review does not have a research question, it is like a book chapter. So, that is the difference here. So, this has got a research question which is answered by this and this is how it answers it. So, the objective is there and then 17 RCTs included analysis, 12 reported better eradication rate, 4 did not find etc. So, all these things, that is how a systematic review finalizes and it completes. Now, what is meta-analysis? Meta-analysis is a statistical combination of at least two studies to produce a single estimate of the effect and healthcare intervention under consideration. So, we first something do like a systematic review, get all the studies, then apply statistics into that. That is why it is called meta-analysis. Pool analysis, I have just mentioned what it is, slightly different from meta-analysis and systematic review is not commonly carried out because it requires all the studies to be having the same study design, statistical models, homogeneous population, so that is very difficult, but rarely pooled analysis is carried out, but that is a type of another type of multiple study analysis. So, you have what are the procedure, uh, procedures and steps of a meta-analysis, tabulate summary data, graph it, what we call it as forest plot, the famous forest plot, check for heterogeneity, then perform meta-analysis with too much heterogeneity is not there. If it is found, you have to give an explanation why you are doing a meta-analysis with the heterogeneity that is found and then evaluate the results and then explore the potential of publication bias by that final plot. So, this is tabulation under this, you have to decide what, what these are the standard things here, setting patient, this is how it will come, patient population intervention and all that. Here it definitely requires the help of a good statistician. We do not do meta-analysis, we take the help of people who are experts in this and they you know how to use the uh, meta-analysis software. And then we create the forest plot. So, as a clinician when you read any meta-analysis, it is extremely important to understand forest plot. All meta-analysis will be filled with forest plot and we should know how to read a forest plot. So, basically in this particular lecture, this is my focus that I am going to tell how to read a forest plot. Now, uh, is there a pointer so that I can show that, that will be easier. Now, this is one of our studies which was included in this, this is the latest meta-analysis on emergency eras in the world, there is no other meta-analysis. So, yeah. So, this is the study, our study which is included, through this forest plot only I will explain. Basically, forest plot will have uh, three zones, this is one zone we have to look for, this is the graph and this is the summary statistics. So, you have to focus on these three zones. So, we will go one by one how to read it. Now, this is the study what I have just labeled there. Now, this is the line which is there, it is called as line of no effect. You can see there, this is line of no effect. So, whenever it is a mean, that means it is a continuous variable, here the length of hospital stay, it is in days. So, it is a continuous variable. So, the line of, that means if you say in these two groups, the length of hospital stay was equal. So, if it is mathematical equal means this minus this is 0, that is why the line of no effect stands at 0. When it is post operative complications, I will say my post operative complications are equal to him. Equal to him because it is a comparison odds ratio relative risk, it will always be 1 here, you can see the line of no effect. So, what is the next step? This is what the same thing, mean axis is 0, mean axis is 1. Now, what is this point estimate? If you look at the graph here, now basically all the studies will go into the horizontal rows. Now, if you look at this graph here and this graph here, this depicts this only. So, many people only read the graph, once you become expert in reading forest plot, you do not have to look here at all. Now, this is what is called as point estimate. Now, how do you uh, read this point estimate? Now, this particular point corresponds to this point 11. So, the, if you see the for total post operative complications in our particular study, it indicates 0.11 means there was a 90 percent reduction in the complications. And the, this is the 0.04 to 0.27, this is the 
confidence interval. The same thing goes for all. So, this is what is the next step we should see. Then the weight of the study, the square box you can see here, the weight of the study is again calculated by the software. This depends on the strength of the study. You can see here this particular study has got maximum weight. Here the last study has got the maximum weight. So, when the parameter changes, the weight changes. It is not the fixed study. Usually it depends on large sample size on also how the study has been effectively done to study that parameter. So, here you see this is the most weighted study. Weighted study means whatever the study says that will have the effect on overall analysis. So, you can see the percentage, this percentage will always be 100. So, this has got a 73 percent weight, this has got a 64 percent weight. Our study has got 18 percent here, here only 5 percent. So, this is what is again the next step which you have to see the weight of the study. Then the summary analysis okay so this is the final result okay what we call the diamond at the base of the of the forest plot so if you see the diamond this is 0 0.5 0 0.5 means there is reduction of 50% reduction in complications in overall uh, erasm that is what it means by that and this is the 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 uh, what do you call the breadth of the diamond is the confidence interval so that is how we read that so now we come to the uh, the portion at the bottom it will tell this side favors eras this side favors non eras so this you have to always see at the bottom here that is what it will indicate i hope i can take 2 3 minutes extra yeah uh, then the next step is this lower lower summary statistics now if you see the summary statistics if this p value is significant this indicates that the diamond is not touching the midline of no effect and it is very much on one side it can be on this side, it can be on that side. If it is on this side, it indicates ERAS totally reduces the complication rate by 50 percent. ERAS, the, the, in ERAS arm, the length of hospitalization is almost less than 3 days. So, that is what it indicates. If the diamond was on that side here and it is again the same value, it will be plus 3.09. That indicates that non-ERAS arms actually have a lesser post-operative uh, hospital stay than the thing. That is how we read. And then the last thing is what we see there is the heterogeneity. You can see here, this will tell how to interpret this forest plot, how much importance to be given to the forest plot. So, you can see the heterogeneity. Next slide I will tell how we calculate it. Here it is only 14 percent. This I square is 14 percent, here 69 percent, very high. So, as far as this meta analysis is concerned, re regarding reduction of post operative complications, even if it says it reduces by 50 percent. I will not give that much of importance because the heterogeneity is high what studies they included. Whereas here it is very low, 14 percent. So, I can dogmatically say this evidence says that when it comes to reduction of length of hospital stay, all ERAS, I mean the ERAS protocols in emergency, this is for all ERAS protocols in emergency, it definitely reduces the length of hospitalization. So, this may not say about the complications, but definitely length of hospitalization it significantly reduces. That is how we actually read a forest plot. Then heterogeneity, okay, indicates effect varies lot across the studies, not by chance because the studies included, see you are forced to include the studies because there are no other studies. If you have to do a thing, that is why uh, somebody might uh, think that why you are including studies which have got heterogeneity. The reason is that if those are the RCTs only available and you are doing a systematic review of RCTs, it is not necessary to have only RCT in systematic review. You can use a combination also, RCTs plus court studies or case control studies. But it is always better to have similar types of designs. That is why when you do a systematic review of, uh, of uh, court study, then let us have all court studies there. RCTs, let us have all RCTs. RCTs sit at the top. That is why most of the systematic review and meta is done with the RCTs. But when they are not there, you have, you have to do with the other types of study design. And these are the reasons due to differences in patient population, co-interventions, outcome measure. Everybody might do it differently, is it not? So, that is how the heterogeneity can increase. Now, how do you look at heterogeneity? Three things we see. One is the, one is the confidence interval. I will show in the picture again. Then number two is the statistical test. And number three is the I squared value. I will show all these three in this picture. Now, you can see here, the first thing is, if you are a professional looking at the forest plot, you do not have to look at these values also. If all these things are overlapping, that means there is no heterogeneity. 
all the random all the confidence intervals are overlapping the picture is all the lines are falling one beneath the other there is no heterogeneity you can see here one is crossing here one is going here one is going there so whenever it's like this a heterogeneity has to be high so it's a easy thing you just glance at it and you can know then you look at the values if the p value is not significant 0.3 is not significant that means there is no heterogeneity that means it's only 14% and when the p value is significant here okay 0.01 it is significant you will find the heterogeneity and the last thing is the i square value 25% very good less than 25% 50% okay 75% bad more than 75% is very bad so that is how we look at it so if you have a forest plot even if it is a meta analysis even if it is published in new england journal of medicine you just glance at that and as a clinician you can determine this is a useless study useless meta analysis that is how it is it gets published sometimes because something very rare and there nothing available in journal will publish it so then we use something called as fixed effect model i'll not go into details of random effect model this has to be done when you have a very good homogeneous population everything is very good you can use fixed effect if it is not there ideally you should use random effect so here we have used fixed effect you can see here also we have used fixed effect but when you have so much heterogeneity ideal circumstances i am not saying we the people who have used it they should have used a uh, random effects model for this particular forest plot so they should not have used a fixed effect model just to briefly tell what does it mean that if there is a population if i uh, draw from like let's say this room i draw five people take a mean then again i draw five people take a mean again i draw if all the times the mean is coming very close to each other that means the population is homogeneous use a fixed effect model i draw five the mean is 12 i draw five mean is 6 i draw five mean is 17 not uh, proper it is it has got so much variation use a random effects model so that is what is the uh, principle of that then as i said about publication bias i gave the reason studies which are significant published in english published by i others and multiple publications all those things are there so this has to be seen by the final plot and you can see here you see these studies you should have you see it is when the good studies are done and appropriately they are done you will always find some people getting negative results always it is never it's not going to happen that always only positive results will come so if you have a distribution like this you see you have only 5 6 here and more there so it indicates that the treatment works but this is how it should show in a meta analysis if it shows like this there is only one negative and all of them are positive that means that many of the studies have not got i am not saying that uh, the studies uh, are you have not got it because you have done a extensive search but if you find something like that there are two reasons for it properly or not searched that is number one number two there are no studies which are negative effects so when you have something like that that indicates that there is a publication bias when publication bias is there then again you cannot draw evidence based conclusions that's what it means by that now this is uh, the last uh, this is one of our studies you can see this is negative study this study is carrying out the effect of perioperative oxygen we can find here see the high oxygen what we used it did not reduce the surgical site infection negative study not only it got published in journal of gastrointestinal surgery it was also included in the plenary presentation which is a very prestigious and society largest conference of gi in the world so there it got published so what i wanted to just emphasize is whether you get a positive result or a negative result always send for publication never put it in the drawer and last one slide about network analysis meta analysis this is now coming up so what is this basically i have done a trial between a and b i have done a trial between a and c i want to know how b and c compare with each other so nowadays people use network analysis so you need not compare uh, a versus b and b versus c you can even compare c versus a which has not been done on a randomized control trial so that is what is called as network analysis this is just a simplified version see this is this is how it is done so when you have a very dark line this indicates that multiple trials are done for that particular thing when you have a very faint line it indicates only one or two trials are done okay so with this you can compute the results and get the evidence for something which has not been carried out so this is one of the uh, things which has been used for last 5 7 years so the key points from this lecture are that systematic reviews and meta analysis provides the highest level of evidence especially when carried out properly answers questions that otherwise could not be answered by individual studies and systematic review does not need statistical backup which i told 
and systematic review and meta-analysis use PRISMA checklist and not CONSORT which is used for randomized controlled trials and then it has got the IMRAD pattern typical what we use for original articles and it's extremely important even if you a person does not write a meta-analysis but when you are reading a meta-analysis if you understand forest plot then you have understood 90 percent of how to interpret a meta-analysis if you do not understand a forest plot Whatever way you read it is, you will have to just see, read the uh, discussion part and just read it like a text that what the author is mentioning about it. So, more than 75 percent or 80 percent article you will not follow and you will not understand. That is why it is very necessary to understand the forest plot. So, these are few of the books we have written on research, writing and publishing and this is thesis writing by Springer Nature and thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. I hope, I wish we had this during a plenary session because critical assessment of papers with a plethora of publications coming out, even, not just postgraduates, but even as surgeons, we need to be aware of it. Are there any questions? No, so thank you for your talk. It was actually masterly and I also wish it was there in the main hall. Uh, it, I, I'm sure it's a big resource for the postgraduates who are attending. I mean, it was kind of an enlightenment for my own self Thank also, you, actually. Uh, just would want to know, uh, like when you conduct any study or a trial, you have to take an institutional approval. I don't think it is required for something like this, or do you have to inform anybody no, when you no, do this? No, no, this doesn't. Because whenever you do a, a this, this database study from, from the literature, it doesn't require. It doesn't Definitely. require. It doesn't require. Definitely. Okay. Neither and systematic review yes. nor meta analysis. Because it is not directly. It's not a human with study, actually. Yes. It's, it's not, not doing on the patients. Yeah. And yeah. when you complete it and yeah. before publishing, hmm. do you take the approval of uh, the institution? No, again not. Because, because this, is a, this is a totally, uh, uh, it's like a, it's like a research based uh, private affair, that sort of thing. So, it's not uh, necessary. Right. Definitely not necessary. Thank you. Yeah. Because you are not using actually technically any resource from the hospital. Yeah. This is as you said, it is only you go to the literature, search the articles from there and then do it. So, by and so, large for all yeah, meta-analysis, yeah, yeah. the… One point, uh, sorry to interrupt you, one point I have not told which is extremely important, like people might think they will do a meta-analysis and send it for publication. Usually meta-analysis, that systematic review, uh, we got an invite from drugs, okay. And the invite was based on a randomized control trial published in Scandinavian Journal of Gastroenterology. So, the editors work like that, that they will see this particular author uh, has, has got publications in this particular area in very good journals. So, once you have like that, you automatically get an invite. Whether it's a review article or it's a systematic review or a meta-analysis, in general, it is always by invitation. invitation. But you can send a meta-analysis, but if you send as a third-party analysis, that means like you have not got any papers on that. Without papers, you cannot document your working on that area. So, then it becomes a little odd that why you have done a meta-analysis something in which you are not an expert. So, right. you please continue. I just interrupted you for that. Just a moment. No. So, yeah. when you do a meta-analysis, there is a lot of uh, statistical uh, assessment which is required. Yeah, yeah, so, you must be taking help from your absolutely, statistical absolutely. department. I do not believe in doing statistics myself. Yeah, My policy is that you should, uh, you should understand statistics so that when you talk to the statistician, you talk in the same language and you are on the same page, that much only. They should understand exactly what you want. If you, if you are totally blank in statistics, they are asking something, he is asking like this whether we should do it and we are not able to understand what he is telling, then he said, okay, you do it. Statistician will not be expert on this particular subject. So, yeah. the interpretations could be wrong. That is why the basic statistics should be known. And how to compute all those things that require the software. And that is a very easy software, just like a click. Once you feed the material, they can take out a meta-analysis forest plot in half an hour. That's are you talking about SSPS? Or some other no, software? No, no, no. They have the uh, they software different. for meta-analysis only, not oh, SSPS. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's a software. I don't know whether it is there in SSPS. All right. But, uh, but they have a software. So, they say like we recently we are doing one meta-analysis halfway through. So, what they will say that uh, you search the studies that we have to search. Then we have to tell them a research question what we are particularly looking at. This is my research question. I want to find out whether this is better than this. Then he will say, okay, in these studies, the problem is that what your research question is there, they have not put the homogeneous population. So, you have to search more and more and more and then exclude out, if you have lots of good studies, you exclude out all the studies which are not, which are heterogeneous and take the homogeneous. Once you have take a very good homogeneous level of studies, then what you have is, uh, uh, when you have, then you have the heterogeneity which comes very low. Then the interpretation of the thing becomes good. 
And for a meta-analysis, technically it can be done with only two studies, minimum required. So here it was five. But if you have 10, 15 and you are doing a meta-analysis and all are homogeneous, it will have a very good effect because 15 studies if they say A is better than B, then naturally A is better than B. So, and it will be, it will be dispersed all across the globe also. That is also necessary. If the studies, what systematic review we did, most of the studies were from Asia and around Asia and Italy. That, that, that actually that the sequential therapy has come from there. So, both, both of them said it's good, 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 good. But when other countries, they also say it is good, then only it can be uniformly followed that it is good. So, that was the limitation we put in our thing. Even though 14 trials out of 17 said it is good, but all the trials were from either Asia or Italy. It was like that. And that was the problem. And just one more uh, practical yeah. Uh, yeah. problem that we face, uh, particularly in the private sector. When you involve a statistician, how do you acknowledge him in the study? Is it uh, an authorship usually, or is it just uh, an acknowledgement? If you are in private sector, one of the good ways to uh, have a statistician is on professional basis. That means uh, okay. on financial basis. Yeah. yeah. Then you don't have to acknowledge him. Usually right. we acknowledge uh, people who are, uh, who are faculty members. Yeah. But if you really feel that somebody, because if he is if he's not connected with the medical field or anything, what we particularly use is people from the Department of Pharmacology and PSM. Yeah. So they are faculty members, they are yeah. medical. So what we do is we acknowledge them. Sometimes we make them co-authors yeah. and sometimes we make them, we put the, uh, this thing in the uh, acknowledgements. After the discussion, right. yeah. all the journals will have, will have a space yeah. for acknowledgement. So we acknowledge them that this particular faculty helped us. If they are very much involved right from protocol stage and all that, that is what happens with many of our student related yes. studies. We put them as co-authors because then they will work because they are also faculty, they also need publications. So for further assessment, promotion and all that in institutes. So we make them co-authors like that and they provide very good statistical assistance. Thank you so much, sir. I am yes. sure everybody enjoyed. Yeah. Yes, please. Dr. Kata, I thoroughly enjoyed your talk. Thank you, sir. Uh, you concentrated only on um, meta-analysis of RCTs. You, you did hint that meta-analysis can be done in cohort studies and uh, case-controlled studies too. Definitely, definitely. So what is the evidence level of uh, meta-analysis of a cohort study? Where does it stand in your uh, pyramid uh, levels? So this is one. the picture, actually. And the first one I have shown, sir. There, this, one. Uh, this one, sir. 1B, sir. Systematic review of uh, randomized control trials and meta-analysis also of those, it comes little le less than RCT. Yes, I have not added that. You have not added that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, it's, it's added. It's below, sir. You can see that. Systematic review of cohort studies, 2A. Okay. 2A. Okay. Uh, the second is from um, case control studies and cohort studies, even from meta-analysis, can you draw any conclusions or is it only and you establish an association and uh, you publish that these two are associated and uh, it's not a conclusive proof of uh, causation. No, definitely. As I said, if there are no randomized control trials available for a particular thing, then in those circumstances, this also provides a reasonably conclusive evidence because any court study also provides a good evidence. It may not be as good as a randomized control trial, but one thing we should remember for some particular research questions, a randomized control trial can never be carried out. The classical Framingham study where they said that smoking associated with lung cancer, randomized control trial can never be carried out because you can't say that some people should smoke and some people should not smoke. So that's a classical example. So there are many research questions where a RCT is unethical. So in those circumstances, we have to depend on uh, growth studies or then we have to depend on case Still control the level studies. is low. Yeah, level is low, definitely. As I said here, it's written the systematic review of code studies at two. But in general, when we have important research questions, it's between the interventions. You would like to know this intervention is good compared to this existing one. So there a randomized control trial can always be carried out. Or it may be a surgical intervention and non-surgical, there also RCT can be carried out. It's not that one side you have an arm with surgery, one side no surgery. But there are many studies showing that also, that people go for one side study and one side chemotherapy or something else and then uh, you compare a RCT. Yeah, please. Sir, very nice and elaborate. Thank you very much. Sir, yeah. sir uh, during uh, like conducting the meta-analysis, we need to register with Prospero. 
so at what point time we should register like after doing all the search through google and embase or uh, like first we register with prospero and then start the meta analysis so what do you advise uh, the thing is that basic uh, homework we have to do that we should know that articles are available and all those things see when we do registration of any trial if it is a interventional trial like this is full fledged technically an observational type of study only is it not we observe from the thing and then do the analysis so when we are doing an interventional study we cannot actually proceed till we have the registration is it not like if you take ctr in india unless and until they have a very clear cut line mentioned there uh, that it has to be registration can only be given before you have started the trial without that you cannot so there it is always done like this but here you will do the homework you will see whether it's feasible to do a meta analysis and then register yeah uh thank you sir one question uh can you just be very quick with a quick answer what is the role of common sense say now rcts cannot be done in most of surgical situations so like parachute evidence level of evidence so what is the role of common sense in practice of surgery common sensical intuitive good outcomes do we need to do rcts uh, for them? that i mean common sense means like are you saying that uh, this something, is something which we know like appendicectomy never had a randomized control trial you told us about smoking so we adopt some surgical principles even when there is no scientific study no you are saying that experience like I, based i don't i don't use energy in laparoscopic cholecystectomy so should it be proved by a randomized control trial uh, that actually unfortunately in the level of evidence comes as the last Uh, is there any way out to improve the level of evidence mm, no that 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 is classified as personal communication so when we say personal communication see you are experienced surgeon you are a senior surgeon based on your experience you are telling unfortunately in levels of evidence it is right now mentioned as uh, uh, this thing only like it is the what's the last level 5 that's no, like if the common sense tells something is not good so how do we prove it like case series we can publish level of evidence can be okay level like four. let's say what you mentioned like uh, i am not using uh, energy sources i am carrying out uh, uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy that's what you said no? so the best way to answer this research question will be through a randomized control trial where you use one side where you don't use and see the outcome and the surgeon who thinks so, it is harmful should he subject his patients to harm using mm -hmm. just for and may i request you to please discuss it after the session because we're running short of time yeah yeah thank you thank you, thank you so much sir thank you thank you it was a very very informative thank talk you. thank you